Okay, it's official. I'm done using VirtualBox. Now I'm using QEMU. And if you don't know what QEMU is, or QEMU, or QEMU, whatever you want, however you want to pronounce it, um, QEMU is a virtual is a virtual machine emulator slash um, virtual machine manager. And if you if you use VirtualBox before or any piece of software like it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it basically lets you emulate entire computers on your computer, which is very nice if you want to test out an entire system or parts of an operating system uh, without, you know, putting it on real hardware. And that's that's what I use it for. So today I'm actually going to be showing you how to use QEMU. Now, uh, QEMU, the, you can use it with a GUI or a GUI, I want to pronounce that, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to be showing you how to use it from the command line, because that's how I use it, and I think that's probably the easiest and simplest way to um, use and edit uh, things for QEMU. So, first thing you want to do is make sure it's installed, first thing. But also, um, we also want to create a uh, disk file, or an image file, for our virtual machine. So, we can do that with the QEMU-IMG command. And this this command can, like, can not only create uh, disk images for your virtual machine, but also uh, edit them in many different ways. There's, there's a whole bunch of things you can do with just this one command. Um, but we're just going to be creating an image. So I'm going to run QEMU create, whoop, and we're going to give it dash F to specify the format. Now there's two main formats that you can use for your disk images. There's raw, uh, which is, as it is, it's just a raw format, or there's QCOW2. And the difference between these two, I'll actually show you. If I do raw and I create, uh, let's just do example.img, uh, example image, and let's just say it's 20 gigabytes in size. If I make that, uh, you'll see that we actually have example.img. And if I actually see how big that is, that takes up 20 gigabytes, despite the fact there's nothing in that uh, disk or that disk image at all, or the um, uh, uh, the actual file. So that's not ideal. I'm actually go ahead and remove that. But what you can do is you can actually place that or use the QCOW2 format. And basically, what that will do is that will expand and use more space as you use it. But it also um, it also compresses your disk a little bit, so that's um, to save space, which is, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to use QCOW2 for this example. And I'm going to create, a, just call this disk.qcow2. And let's just make this 10 gigabytes. And so now we have our, as you can see, this is significantly smaller. It's only around 200 kilobytes. So we're going to be using this. This is our um, disk image. And I'm going to be um, creating a virtual machine, or installing an OS. So I actually have an ISO image to uh, avoid Linux ISO, ISO image to uh, install. And so to actually run our virtual machine, what we need is to run the QEMU system command. And if I actually uh, uh, see what all the systems that are available to me, uh, we, can, we can, have a choice, of course, choose um, where is it? Uh, oh, here you go. XA664, which is what most people will be running. Or if you have a really old computer, I386, which is 32-bit. Um, but you can also emulate a bunch of different systems, like 64-bit ARM, 32-bit ARM, AVR, um, Motorola, that's an old one, uh, MIPS, uh, RISC, uh, RISC, RISC V, and, um, Let's see, PowerPC and a bunch of different architectures. It's actually pretty nice. Um, but I'm just going to be sticking to vanilla x86-64. So I'm going to uh, be uh, just running a base system. Of course, you can always, you know, do other CPUs or different architectures. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it um, allocate uh, memory to it. So we do that with dash M. And I'm going to allocate, mm, let's do four gigabytes of memory. And so that will give it four gigabytes of RAM for the entire system. And next I want, um, another thing I want is a network. And you can set up a network interface by using 
dash NIC, and this stands for Network Interface Controller. And we're going to do user networking, comma, model equals vert IO. And basically, this just tells the virtual machine to use the vert IO driver for the networking, so it speeds it up a bit and makes it a bit more seamless. And now we want to give it our disk file, or the disk, yeah, disk file that we made. So we can do drive, and we're going to say file equals, I think it was, uh, <laughs> one second. Um, yeah, it was disk.qcow2. So disk.qcow2. And we're going to tell it media equals disk. And if equals vert IO. And this will, this will also choose the vert IO driver to speed up our, um, di uh, the speed in which we read and write, read and write to the disk. So I think that's everything that we need. We can also specify um, CD-ROM, and this is basically our ISO image that we want to start. So I can do void ISO. And this is all we really need, the base minimum to actually start our virtual machine. If I go ahead and run that, it'll go ahead and start right up. And I can go ahead and actually install this uh, install the system. But I won't do that because there are a few, a uh, few extra features that I want to enable first. Uh, I'll wait for this whole system to boot up. Boot up. Because it can actually boot up uh, a lot faster than it is right now. Um, I'll, I'll actually go ahead and I might quit. Yeah, it's taking a while to boot, so I'm actually going to enable a very important setting. So we have all these settings enabled, um, but it's actually, I would say, one of the most important ones, if you have this uh, available to you, definitely use it. It's the enable KVM option. And what this does is if you're, um, if the system you're running uh, has support for KVM, which stands for, I'm pretty sure it's Kernel Virtual Management, I think it's what it stands for. It basically allows your, um, it basically allows your virtual machine to run closer to the hardware and almost uh, directly interface with the kernel itself um, in order to actually speed up the entire virtual machine. So I'll actually go ahead and start this again. And it should actually start up relatively faster than um, last time. Uh, give it a moment, but yeah, that's the power of a uh, KVM, which is pretty nice. Uh, give it a moment. So, ah, there you go. And as you can see, that uh, that kind of started up a bit, bit faster. So I'm actually going to go ahead and shut this back down because uh, there's a few other op uh, nice options that you can enable. So we have KVM on, which uh, gives it a significant, a significant boost. But what we can also do is if you, for example, if you have two types of media right here, um, a disk image and a CD-ROM, and you want to actually be able to choose one of them on boot, what we can do is you can give the option dash boot and then say menu equals on. And this will give you a, and this will force you into, oh, <laughs> Uh, and this will give you a boot menu. In this case, we just want to choose number four, which is the CD, and do that. So let's close out of that. Um, there's also I'm gonna get I'm gonna go, go ahead and get rid of that option because I don't want it personally. Uh, there's also the CPU host option, and this is this is if your um, if QEMU doesn't recognize your system CPU or certain aspects of it that um, it's, it can't find initially. And this will basically make sure that the code that's running on your virtual machine is able to, uh, or the features running a virtual machine that can utilize all the features of your actual host system, CPU wise. And so that might, you know, speed up your system maybe a bit. Um, I'll go ahead and actually close out of the system again. Um, and there's also the, there's another very good option is the dash SMP option. And basically this, this allows you, SMP stands for, um, MP of course stands for uh, multiprocessor. So this lets you choose the amount of threads you want to run your system on. In this case, I'll do two. And so this will actually let my system run on two separate threads, which is basically just having like a dual core CPU or dual thread uh, CPU 
on my system or on my virtual machine. Uh, so that's <laughs> once again a very nice feature to have. Um, VirtualBox does actually does support that too, but QEMU is of course more light, light more lightweight and just faster, so it just makes life better. And of course that's boot up, so that's good. Um, and another thing I wanted to show was uh, so I have all those options. The other one is graphics because one thing VirtualBox is not good at at all is graphics. Um, I think it does have a little bit of 3D acceleration, but that's it. Um, QEMU has a lot more um, options for graphics. So we've just been using the default. But if I run dash VGA and QXL, this will enable 2D acceleration. And I mean, you're probably not going to notice it because this is just a... Um, this is just a, you know, command line or terminal uh, image. But if you're using a graphical system, you can probably notice a bit of a performance boost or a bit of a speed up. And if you if you want 3D acceleration or something to speed up a, a 3D processing on your virtual machine, you can give it dash VGA vert IO, and this will tell it to use the vert IO driver. And then display and give it SDL GL equals R. And this will actually boot up the um, uh, boot up the system in this tiny little part of the screen. But when the system actually boots up all the way, you'll see that it'll actually take up the size of the entire box right here. Just give it a moment. Uh, yep. Has to boot up all the way, and eventually it should fill up the entire box that this um, this entire QEMU box. There we go. And so now we have the entire system uh, up and running. And so I'll just go ahead and power this down. There we go. Okay. And finally, I guess a last option I want to cover is. I'll get rid of that. Uh, for network, now for dash NIC, this will actually emulate a uh, network uh, network connection. But if you actually want to use your host system or your host computer network, you can just do dash NIC and then give it tap, and that will just. Oh, of course you have to. Um, in order to do that, you actually have to have pseudo privileges or super user privileges. But that's a nice option to have. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and install, um, quickly install Void Linux on the system because I want to show you how to boot from, or that you can just boot from, uh, just from the disk image and not have a CD-ROM attached. Uh, so I'll go ahead and have that do that. And actually, I'll cut back to when the uh, system's installed. Okay, so I'm back. I installed the entire, um, all Void Linux onto the, um, this disk image. And it only took around like not even like five minutes, which goes to show how um, how easy it is to and how quick it is to install Linux nowadays. But so I actually have to install on this disk image. So I can, I can actually remove void or void ISO and get rid of this section from our boot command or virtual command virtual system. And if I go ahead and run that, it'll actually boot straight from the hard drive. And we can go ahead and boot right into that and run our system without having, of course, the CD uh, or disk image attached, attached. And so that's pretty much the basics of QEMU. There is a lot more you can do with it. Though, like, there is probably hundreds, if not thousands, of options, the command line arguments, and a bunch of customizations you can do with just this one program. Um, and like I said, you're able to, to emulate like normal x86 systems, ARM systems, RISC V, PowerPC, a bunch of obscure, uh, a bunch of other obscure ones too. But that's all I'm going to cover because there's so much for this uh, one program. It's it's mind-boggling. But yeah, if you if you use VirtualBox after watching this video, shame on you. But <laughs> I'm joking. But use QMU. It's it's amazing. I'll see you.